Hello, in this video, I want to talk to you briefly about impact and engagement. Um, really just the preliminary stages of this, I want you to start thinking about how you might take your research and reach out to other communities outside of the academic sphere. And there are two key things that I want to cover in the session today about how to do this. The first is about personal branding, and the second is about social networking. So firstly, personal branding. Now, one of the key aspects of impact and engagement or trying to take your own research and translate it for other communities is to know your audience. And by knowing your audience, I don't just mean literally who is sitting there and listening when you give some kind of presentation, but also considering all of your potential audiences who might come across your research on the internet, through social media, or through various other types of platforms. You need to think who are you intending to reach and what particular message do you want to send? And in this, I think it's important to start thinking about personal branding. What do you as a researcher bring to the table? What interests you or how, and how can you best translate and disseminate your expertise for other communities. Now, I hesitate to use the term personal branding because it has come under some scrutiny as it is a means by which you use market tools to sell yourself. And some have said this is a commodification of the self, a surrender to market logic, or even a commercialization of the personal self. I do, however, think that some useful things can be procured from thinking about personal branding. Rather than thinking of it as something restrictive or as a box or a label in which you put yourself restrictively, I like to think of it as a tool that we use to reach out to our community. So personal branding is an effective tool, I think, to help you consider your message. So you need to think about the audience, as I mentioned, and your own message. What is it that you want the audience to get out of what you bring to the table? And on a related note, I think thinking about personal branding helps you to think laterally. So you think about all of your different areas of expertise and how they might come together and confluence and form your own personal brand. And indeed, interdisciplinary work is very vogue right now. And so thinking about how all these different areas of expertise work well together would bode well, I think, for your academic future anyways. If you're interested in learning more about personal branding, I highly recommend the book being displayed right here called Platform by Cynthia Johnson. She is a self-made marketing exec. This book is somewhat commercial, but it is written sort of for the everyday person. It's meant for researchers and experts to help figure out how they might personally brand themselves in order to disseminate their research and expertise to communities. And the second thing that I want to say about impact and engagement is the importance of building your network. So social media, of course, has been on the rise for the last 10 to 15 years. And this is an excellent starting point for you to build your networks, whether you're doing this on LinkedIn or Twitter, Instagram is coming there as well, and I predict in the future TikTok. This is a great way to meet other like-minded academics, students, and people from the public who might be interested in what you have to say. In another video, I will be talking about how you might create different types of content for these different social media tools, particularly video content, to get your message and your research out there. But in this one, I just want to highlight some of the benefits of using each of these platforms. So here's an example of my Twitter page, which I've only really begun to use actually since I became an academic. And as noted, it's a great way to reach out to other academics in your community and build your network. Um, so two tips I want to give you in using Twitter. Uh, make sure that your, your profile byline right here, what's directly under your name and your username, clearly sets out your interests and what you're researching. So that if somebody were to search for Twitter, looking for historians of religion, emotions, and family, even any of those, they would come across my profile. Likewise, it connects directly to the university at which I'm studying. I give a brief synopsis of my PhD as well and other interests. So this represents a sort of confluence of all of my interests or what I'm trying to set out as my personal brand. The second tip 
I want to give you is make sure that you keep a pinned tweet at the top of your profile with something about your latest research, maybe highlighting a publication you've recently had published in a journal or a recent blog post that you have created and had published, or perhaps just an overview like you can see here of your research. This way, if somebody comes to your profile, once they've read your profile byline, they can straight away get an understanding of recent research or an overview of your research. My next tip is to make sure that a public CV that displays your research interests, the different conferences that you've spoken at, and the subjects in which you are interested in, and what you've published, make sure there is a place somewhere on the internet which has all of these in the same place. Uh, many universities will have a sort of researcher page for postgraduate, at least doctoral students, where you can update this sort of thing. So if they do have it, make sure you do update it with a summary of your research, your backgrounds, and I like to include abstracts of all the conferences, whether they're academic or public facing that I've delivered, just so if somebody does come across me, they know exactly what my interests are, what I've spoken on before, and they can also find blogs and publications that I've delivered. If your university does not have a publicly facing research profile that you can fill in, or indeed if you are at the postgraduate master's level and you still want to do something like this, just create your own website with WordPress. It's very easy to do. There are plenty of templates you can utilize to set it up and then import this type of information into your website so that if people search for your name, they can find everything they need about you. And it might be worthwhile as well to link this particular website, whether it be on your institutional profile page or your own WordPress website, directly to your social media links. So on Twitter, put it on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever other platforms you are using as a professional persona. LinkedIn might also be a very useful platform for you to use, especially if you'd like to do any work with those outside of the academic sphere. So if you want to work with schools or you want to work with other professional type of communities, I highly recommend setting up your profile on LinkedIn as well. And if you do decide to create some kind of website, just include that link directly in your LinkedIn profile like I've done here. So a couple of tips with using LinkedIn. I highly recommend setting up some links in this featured bit of your profile. So you can see here, I have a link directly to my institutional profile. That is my, my academic CV, as it were. I have a link to some YouTube videos that I've done and to my own personal blog. And of course, generally speaking, LinkedIn will display all of your work experience, your employment experience as sort of an online and live CV. Now, as well as including general information such as where you were educated and where you've worked, you can also add other profile sections, as you can see here, in which you might include accomplishments. So you might include your publications, and this can be published works in a journal, or you might include blog posts that you've done. You can also put in projects, so maybe in the project section you may want to include conferences that you've spoken at or helped to organize. So do look at some of these features in LinkedIn to make the most of building your own profile. Thank you for watching this video on how to build your personal brand and utilize social networking tools for impact and engagement. I hope you found it helpful. Please do subscribe to my channel for further research tips type videos. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, please do leave them in the comments below the description. Thank you.